Uh, welcome to day 40 of trying to create a $100,000 business doing the thing I love, which is just creating videos. Today I have a very special episode because I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I record videos at Carrot Tattoo Studios. Everything from the movements to how I treat customers and artists and, and the owners and, um, and how I edit videos, the whole process, everything. I'm going to teach you guys how I do everything. I'm not sure if this will be helpful to people, but hopefully it's somewhat interesting. So um, first of all, shout out to Ashley. Ashley recorded a bunch of behind the scenes footage for me today. So we'll kind of uh, watch that later. But I think for the most part, I'm going to cover it. Now I've got my iPad here. So I'm going to do a bit of drawing um, and writing. I'm not that good. My handwriting is absolutely atrocious. So apologize if you can't read it. First of all, we'll start off with the movements. So in terms of movements, um, there are a few movements that I can do. Um, the main ones I use are leaning, uh, rotation, and arm. So in terms of leaning, you can lean forwards, obviously, you can lean backwards, you can, leave, you can lean side to side, um, and any angle that's not like breaking your back pretty much. Now in terms of rotation, um, the main rotations that I like to use are going from side to side in like a kind of like an what is it like a like a bowl shape so basically just like going from side to side to side um oftentimes that creates like a really cool effect especially with the end shot of the the final result of the tattoo um yeah i do that a lot and then in terms of arm movements obviously you can go up down you can go side to side um so yeah i'll, I'll kind of mix it up and i'll pretty much implement all of those when recording a tattoo artist doing their thing now in terms of how i kind of operate the number one thing that a lot of people don't realize about being a videographer even being a photographer is i think it's really important that you make not only the client but the artists and the customers um comfortable with you being there um it's kind of like a daunting thing you know you're carrying around like this big ass camera it's someone filming you is some people say it as like an invasion of privacy. I know for a fact that if someone came up to me and just started randomly recording me, I'd be like, okay, what is going on here? I'd probably feel a lot more comfortable with it because I'm always on camera. But for someone who you know isn't always on camera, who's kind of like a bit more shy, maybe introvert, um, to get like this big ass camera um, you know, recording you, it's a, it's a fairly daunting thing. For me, a big part of my job, which a lot of people kind of don't, I, I assume a lot of people wouldn't even think about, is making people feel comfortable that you're there with this big ass camera. Um, even if you're there with your phone, like it's, you notice that, you know, you see someone filming, you're like, okay, are they filming me? Like, what are they filming? So um, yeah, it's obviously a lot more obvious with this big camera, but for me, it's really important that I make people feel comfortable. And obviously if I'm able to make the customer and the artist comfortable with me being there recording them, then oftentimes a client, um, in this case, Ethan and Hendon, the owners, um, they're probably gonna be feel comfortable as well because everyone is comfortable. So in terms of how I make people feel comfortable, there are a few different things. The first thing I do when a customer rocks up and oftentimes from a customer's point of view, you have to understand that you know maybe it's their first tattoo they don't know what to expect maybe they're nervous or maybe they've gotten tattoos before and they're used to it or maybe you know they've gotten tattoos before but they're still kind of you know nervous they're not used to the the feeling of getting a tattoo so for some people it's it's a completely comfortable and it's like a whatever it's like i'm just getting another tattoo for some people it's a very daunting experience so you have to keep that in mind so for me when i um see a customer come in i kind of observe uh, if they've gotten tattoos before, um, how they kind of walk down the stairs, you know, are they are they very confident? Are they kind of like looking around the place and like kind of like scoping out the joint and do they look a bit nervous? Like how do they look? And then that'll kind of uh, that'll kind of change how I approach different customers when I go to tell them that I'm going to film the tattoo. Pretty much when the customer comes down, they talk to the artist, they settle down a bit. I'll basically just go up to them and say, hey, I'm just letting you know that I'm just going to be filming for this artist. Um, I, I won't be filming the whole time. I'll film here and there, but um, I just wanted to let you know and I won't get your face in the video. Um, and oftentimes, um, they're completely fine with it. I, I've actually never had anyone say, no, I don't want to be filmed. And I think there are a few reasons for that. I think that if you approach it in the wrong way, um, you definitely get some people being like, nah, I'm good. Um, it, the approach matters a lot. So obviously, again, depending on how they kind of come into the studio, if they're nervous, I'll approach it more kind of like, I don't know, soft. Whereas like, you know, if, if they're like a, an Australian guy who's tatted up, who looks like he plays, you know, AFL, I'll kind of be more friendly with it. And I'll be like, hey man, I'm just letting you know that I'm just going to be filming this tattoo video. Um, I won't film the whole time, but I'll, you know, I'll film here and there and I won't get your face in it. Is that cool? 
that's like that's pretty much what I'll say. But on the other hand, if the customer's coming down the stairs and they look a bit more nervous, um, and maybe they're coming by themselves, and maybe they've only got a few tattoos, um, I'll approach it very differently. I'll be a lot more soft in terms of I'll probably say something like, "Hey, my name's you. I'm just I'm just letting you know I'm going to be filming a tattoo video for this person. Um, I won't be filming the whole time, um, but yeah, I'll make sure not to get your face in or anything. Is that alright? I've had absolutely no issues with uh, any customers um, and filming them. So. Yeah, I, th I think I think the approach matters, and I think what you say matters. In terms of what I say, I think first of all, I kind of like let them know that I am gonna be filming this. So I'm like, hey, I'm just letting you know that I'm gonna film this artist's tattoo process, um, or this artist doing the tattoo. Um, so in, in that kind of um, in that phrasing, it's like, okay, this guy's gonna be recording me. But then I kind of like ease it with, um, but I won't be filming the whole time. Because obviously, if I were filming the whole time and the tattoo's painful, maybe, or even if I'm just there, like standing right there with a video camera recording them, it's obviously a very uncomfortable thing. So I like to let them know that I'm not going to be filming the whole time, um, and I'll only be filming here and there, um, which is like very casual. And I'm and, and and the reality is, it is very casual. Like I literally maybe record for ten to thirty seconds at a time, and then I sit back down for thirty minutes, and then I check up again, and I record for maybe ten to thirty seconds. And so it's like the tattoo videos are very simple. It's just a before, uh, during, and after. And the whole video is like 10 to 15 seconds. So it's super simple. Um, and so I just like let them know that. And then afterwards, I kind of like completely let their guard down. Um, or maybe not completely, but I let them know that I'm not going to record the face. I think that's the biggest thing, right? Because um, if their face is attached to the video, it's, it's, it, 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 they're very identifiable and if you know I'm recording them it probably means that I'm going to post it um, somewhere and um, if I say that their face isn't going to be in it they're like okay no one's going to be able to identify me in the video that's completely fine whatever um, so they're the three things that I say so basically I'll let them know what I'm doing I'll say that I'm doing it occasionally and then I'll kind of let them know that I'm going to respect their privacy but not by not showing their face now again I, I think the way you approach this matters I think if you kind of walk up to the client and or the customer and you're like uh, hey, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just letting you know that I'm, I'm just going to be filming um, a, a video for this tattoo. I'm going to be filming you like getting tattooed by this artist. Um, like they're probably going to be like, okay, what the fuck? Like, why is he so nervous? Like, okay, we're like, yeah, what is going on? They're going to freak out. If you're nervous, then you're going to make someone else nervous. It's like you know, I've, I've, I've seen tattoo artists kind of say, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a bit nervous, right? Because I, I was filming the tattoo artist, and then she said oh, you're filming, I'm a bit, um, you make me nervous. And then therefore the client, the customer was like, wait, why are you nervous? And now I'm nervous. So it's kind of like a, you know, if you're confident, if you're calm, if you're very casual, oftentimes the other person's going to feel that way as well. I do also like to smile. Um, I, there's something about smiling, right? Like when someone smiles at you, it's very hard to f like just dislike that person or it's very hard not to smile back in some cases as well. Like it's, you know, unless they have a really creepy smile. Um, yeah, oftentimes smiles are associated with something good. And so, yeah, for me, like I, I like to try and smile the best I can. I think it's a good way of kind of making people feel more comfortable. Now on the other side of things, on the flip side is the artist. It's important for me also to make sure that I'm respecting the artist and what they're actually doing, which is tattooing. Now tattooing is an art that you have to you have to concentrate a lot and you have to be very precise. And so if there's a videographer there, with a big ass camera recording them, that's gonna be on their mind. So for me, I have to make sure I do a few things. Number one, I have to make sure that I'm very steady and I'm very slow um, and I'm very silent. Obviously when they're tattooing, I don't wanna make any sudden movements. I don't wanna make any large noises. I don't wanna you know, disrupt them from the work that they're doing. I wanna kind of be a ghost. I wanna be like a ninja, I wanna be silent. Um, I wanna pretend as if I'm not there, but I'm still getting the shot. Is I wanna be aware of my surroundings. There have been a few times where people in the, tattoo studio um you know have, have walked into a chair or have like you dropped something and a lot of these artists are so prof professional that you know it, ha however big the noise is or whatever disrupts them they won't like flinch or anything um but i think if in most cases you want to be aware of your surroundings just just in case um, it does scare the artist and it does make them flinch and then they've just drawn a massive line just a random squiggly line on someone that was not meant to be there. So with that, it's it's really important that 
I know my surroundings and I look around and I make sure that, okay, there's a chair there, the guy's tattooing there, there's a random little fucking table thing there. Like I just got to make sure that I know where everything's at. So if I do decide to take a step when I'm filming or trying to get a shot um, or if I'm rotating, I know that you know, I'm, I'm not going to bump into anything and I'm not going to drop anything or I'm not going to bump something off the table or whatever. Now, the other aspect is, like, I guess, just smiling and being friendly, I guess, and uh, friendliness. Okay, I can't be stuffed writing friendliness. <laughs> but um, yeah, just like making sure that I'm smiling. Um, a lot of the times I actually can't communicate with the artists because they're, um, they can speak, some of them, can, a lot of them can speak a, a tiny bit English, but sometimes, you know, my I slur my words and I don't say things properly. And so um, for me, a lot of the time, I, I would just like smile and I'll give the thumbs up um, and I'll laugh or, uh, you know, if they turn around and they see me and they kind of give me like the, like the uh, surprise look, I'll, I'll just smile and I'll just like be like thumbs up and like it'll, I, I just try and be like positive, I guess, and friendly. And again, it's one of those things where like, if I'm confident, if I'm calm, if I'm happy, if I'm chill, like the, the artist is going to sense that and then they're going to feel like, okay, this guy's calm, he's happy. I have nothing to worry about. That I always like to kind of converse with the the customers in some sort of way, whether it be you know, is this your first tattoo? If it seems like it's their first tattoo, or you know, um, how was your day today? I don't usually say that actually. I usually say, oh, like, does this tattoo have some sort of meaning, or you know, does the tattoo hurt? How are you feeling? Stuff like that. Um, at the end, I like to chat with them as well. I usually like to say, like, how was the pain? Um, I've heard like getting tattoos in that area like really hurts. Um, and like, I'll just have like a, just a regular conversation with them. And again, I think that makes, um, that makes the customer feel comfortable and more okay with me filming, which is also another, um, aspect that helps me improve and helps me film in general and get the shots that I need to get. Because if the customer is like completely comfortable with me filming, I'll be okay getting super close to them while they're getting tattooed. Whereas if they're not okay with it, you know, they're going to like death stare the f shit out of me when I'm like getting anywhere near them. So for me, it's really, really important, especially also with the artists as well. Like, you know, sometimes I want to get those super close up shots of the needle literally piercing the skin with ink. And I can only do that by getting really close to the artist. And if the artist is not comfortable, I, I, I won't even attempt it. And this kind of thing applies to like all the clients that I have. And I, I think that like, if you're a really good technically skilled photographer or videographer, but you're socially really bad or you're not, you know, you don't come across like confident or you don't come across, uh, you come across kind of awkward and weird and, um, you know, you make clients and customers and people feel uncomfortable when you're filming, you're not going to be a good videographer. People are not going to want to work with you on an ongoing basis. People are not going to give you more opportunities. People are not going to refer you. Um, the, the shots that you'll get are probably going to feel very unnatural as well, especially if you're recording in a restaurant or a cafe. You know, you're recording in, in scenes where there are other people there. You know, if you're very awkward and uncomfortable, everyone's going to be looking at you. Everyone's going to be looking at the camera like, what the fuck is this guy doing? It's going to create a very awkward scene. And especially if there are models as well that you're recording, if you're awkward, the model is going to like just not be able to kind of do their thing as models and they're kind of, kind of going to feel awkward as well. So this is the most important thing I think that is not many people think about when it comes to videography. I would say that like obviously having the skill is important, but this is probably up there, if not equally as important um, as having the technical skills. So once I do that, um, I do have like spreadsheets. For me, it's really important that I keep track of all the artists that I'm recording. So on a monthly basis, I'll record anywhere between 20 to 25 artists um, for the uh, for Carrot Tattoo Studios. And so sometimes it can get really hectic because I'll record seven, eight, nine artists in one day. And I'm frantically just like keeping track of, okay, I've recorded the start of that. Um, I've got to record the end of that. I've got to record the the middle bit of that um, and obviously sometimes I forget which kind of angles and which kind of shots have I done for which artists so I like to keep spreadsheets to track all of that information so I'd have a spreadsheet like this with the before during and after with artist one artist two and artist three and then if I'd you know record um, the before scene I'd finish that I'd just highlight it um, you know I do the before scene for artist two highlight it number three do the during do the after all highlighted, etc. Then it comes to the editing aspect, and the editing aspect is obviously very, very hard to show you. I've recorded videos actually. I think on one of the days I edited a Carrot Tattoo Studio video. So if you guys want to check that out, make sure to do so. But yeah, editing is one of those things that can take anywhere between ten minutes 
to literally an hour even more uh, for a single video for Curry Tattoo Studios. It depends if, you know, if I find the right music straight off the bat or if, you know, I get the perfect shots or, you know, it, it just depends on, on a lot of different factors. Sometimes I'll get the best footage ever that's steady, that's like completely perfect, um, whereas sometimes the shots, I'll think they're like really steady, but maybe I had too much caffeine. Maybe, I don't know, I was like just like, I don't know, maybe I ate too much food and like my hand was shaking or whatever, ever so slightly. And that's caused the video to kind of be wobbly and stuff. And so I have to figure out, okay, this video now can't be like this calm, relaxing video that I set it out to be. It's got to be a more quick and montage -y kind of video with like upbeat song. So what kind of upbeat song can I use for this? And then you got to think about like what the tattoo is. Is it a, a, a tattoo of a dog? Okay, I'm not going to put, you know, um, Cardi B's WAP on there, you know? Like, I'm, I, I gotta figure out a song that suits the tattoo. Editing is a combination of shots, um, effects, transitions, and music. If I get the shots well, then I don't have to do as much effects um, and I don't have to do as many transitions. I think that's pretty much it for Carry Tattoo Studios in terms of how I operate. Um, I'll, I'll literally go into the tattoo studio anywhere between probably like four to maybe eight times a month. God, my handwriting is getting significantly worse as we get through this. But yeah, anywhere between four to eight times a month. Uh, this month I've gone to the tattoo studio. Um, so this month I'll go in there actually nine times a month. Um, but one of the days I was literally just filming one person. Each time I'll record anywhere between like one to... Probably, I think the maximum I've done is like nine artists uh, in a single day. So yeah, obviously the more artists I'm shooting on a day, the more hectic it is. Um, but for the most part, it's 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 pretty chill. I think that again, the most important thing is actually making people feel comfortable, which is, is really interesting. So yeah, that's a bit about how I operate and how I shoot for Carrot Tattoo Studios. My hay fever's, oh, I haven't had a hay fever tablet today. That's why my hay fever's wilding out. But as I've said before, like the tattoo studio is like, it, like honestly, like I, I didn't expect it. It's actually it's actually such a fun client to work with. Um, first of all, Ethan and Hendon are like the best owners. They've created the best culture in a tattoo studio. Not that I've been to many, but from what I've seen, like they've just created the best culture. It's really, it's a really fun environment, even though I don't know how to speak Korean. And I can't communicate with some of the the artists um like it, it's just really fun and it's just like it, we we all laugh because we can't you know people don't understand me and I, they don't I, I don't understand them it's like it's just it's just kind of but we somehow make it just it's just fun um and i've been learning a bit of korean from some of the artists um annyeonghaseyo uh kamsamnida uh pommichotta pommichotta I think is how you say it. I'm not, I'm trying to. I'm trying so hard to sound Korean. I, I guarantee I just sound like not Korean at all. Um, but yeah, I've been learning a bit. I'm aiming to learn one new word, one new Korean word a day um, that I'm there. So yeah, it's, uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So let's have a look at the footage from today. So this is Ashley. Um, I was trying to teach Ashley how to how I basically take the shots. Um, the main issue that Ashley had when she was using the camera, and she usually uses her phone, so it's obviously very different. But um, the main thing was when I do the leaning shot, lean in shots and lean out and, you know, I'm like bringing the camera in, bringing the camera out. It's almost like my hand, I, 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 I never move the hand and the, the body at the same time. So I'm never like going like that. I'm never doing that. I'm always either using my hands and I'm keeping them stationed and then I lean back or I'm just using my hand. I never do both. Oh, actually, no, sometimes I do do both. That's a lie. Um, but yeah, mainly for Ashley... Um, the main kind of uh, main things that Ashley was, ha was having difficulties around was just keeping the camera steady because it is a, a heavy camera and it's, it's big and bulky, but also the movements were a bit too quick. It's important that you try and be as slow and steady as possible. Um, and then obviously uh, extending in and all the way out is really important. Um, but overall, Ashley killed it with the videos. She actually recorded my tattoos and they came out pretty good. So it's important that when they're tattooing, I get the right settings and I get the right brightness um, at the start. I was shooting really, really dark. And so when I'd increase the brightness of the video, of the footage, it'd be grainy and it, it, it kind of wouldn't suit the other shots. Like some shots would be very dark, some shots would be very bright. And when you, when you adjust them to be the same, they don't come out the same um, in post-production. So it's important that when I'm filming, I try and keep the lighting consistent. Um, and oftentimes I try and, I, I go to the highest exposure um, possible without it being like way too bright 
and then I bump it down like two notches. So at this point, um, I think I was teaching Ashley how I edit the Carrie Tattoo Studio videos and we were primarily talking about music choice. Um, then I believe we talked to an artist for a bit about whatever. Um, again, you can see her smiling a lot because the artists there are very nice. And then I'm kind of watching Ashley do her proposal. So Ashley just sent off her first proposal to her first client today. Um, and she had, and Ashley, I hope you don't mind me um, saying this, but she basically had a client and she was debating whether you know she should charge her or whatnot. This is sort of like a friend, um, but she it's in a it's in a, an industry that she wants to work in kind of like do marketing for in the future how much of this should i do for free should i just do one video for free and for me my recommendation was okay wait do you have money do you you know do you have savings um if you have savings and if you have time then i would try and do it for free i think that there's more value in having a bunch of videos for this business that and it's a pretty somewhat well-established business there's more value in actually having those videos in your portfolio so you can show potential prospects in the future than having nothing or just having one singular video. Um, also the fact that you learn a lot from them in terms of, okay, you've worked with a client for one month. You'll, you'll be known in that clinic. You know, um, the, the client will probably really, really appreciate it. And so when you go to finally, you know, um, it, you know, start charging them, they'll be more inclined to hear you out. The other aspect is, again, you'll have like a bunch of videos in your portfolio to other prospects and other clients. It'll look like you've been working with this client for a month. And I think a lot of people wouldn't expect um, you to do that work for free. So it'll seem like the, the, the people that you're doing free videos for, it, it'll seem like it, it's paid work. Um, and then they'd be more inclined to pay you for work. Yeah, that's why that's why there's so much value in doing free work. I did I did a month of a month and a half of free work. I guarantee you, no one thought I did that much free work. And clients probably thought that a lot of people paid me. And so a lot of people would be like, "What are your rates?" This is me kind of scoping out and being as slow and silent and kind of seeing the best angle to shoot from, getting as close as possible to the artist. Um, it's really important for me as well that uh, I only move when the tattoo artist takes a break from tattooing so oftentimes they'll go to refill the ink in the tattoo gun or they'll you know wipe the the skin with a tissue that's when i'll kind of like do another kind of move and i'll move locations or i'll move closer um yeah and then here this is where actually sent off her first proposal congrats ashley and then i took a sales call today actually um so i got a lead through my website and um yeah i ended up basically pitching them my monthly package Hopefully you guys found this interesting. Hopefully you guys learned something maybe. Um, if you guys are getting into videography or photography, um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment it down below. I do have a few questions um, that I need to answer. Uh, basically at the end of every video from now on, I'm going to do a little Q&A. Can you please do a video about how you get clients? Uh, cold email strategy, question mark. So I don't do cold emails, although cold emails do actually work sometimes. You just have to be consistent and you have to do a lot of them. Um, I sent off about, actually I didn't send off that many uh, that many emails, but I sent off maybe like five emails to like five different hotel chains, um, one of them being Hilton. And that's actually how I got the Hilton job. Um, with Hilton though, it was really interesting. And I, I think you'll find this with a lot of business owners, but it's important that you send out the email and once you get a response, you email them as soon as possible. The other thing is having a good offer gets you more responses, obviously. Um, so I was offering free videos. And then the other thing is is that, you know, sometimes they'll not respond. So you'll email them, you'll get a response, and then you'll email them again, dead silence. Um, so in that case, business owners are busy, marketing managers are busy, you just got to follow up. So with Hilton, literally, I, I think I emailed them at the start of when I first started doing this video work and I only worked with them this month. Um, so yeah, it, it was like three months of like, just like ghost nothingness. Um, I followed up maybe like five times. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a long process, but that's just the reality of the situation. Work with bus um, working with like busy business owners, which is nearly all of them. Love your videos. Thank you. Um, what makes me follow your journey day to day is your transparency and the fact that you share every detail. It's inspiring. Thank you. Um, can you give me more information about how you got in touch with these current clients and how do you charge them? Like how do you calculate the monthly rates? So it'll be anywhere between 750 to $2,000 per month that's kind of the range that i have it in i don't usually like to go lower than like 750 i'm trying to keep it within that range right now um and then in terms of how i got my clients a lot of my clients um let me think so tapped i did a free video cutter did a free video 
Carrick Tattoo Studios did a free video, but that was also a referral. Um, I actually tapped and um, Carrick Tattoo Studios was a referral. Um, primary school mate, Shashank, shout out Shashank, referred me to tapped. And then uh, Ray Lynn um, uh, referred me to Carrick Tattoo Studios. Um, so yeah, shout out to all my friends who have like referred me to other businesses. Um, also uh, TGFX, which is an agency that basically focuses on hospitality businesses. Um, that was Vivian. So yeah, Viv... Um, yeah, introduced me to TGFX and that's how I started working with them. So basically I'm like a almost like a contractor for TGFX. And then Lucas obviously um he used to my be my ex boss. He, he recently wanted to start doing YouTube videos. Um and he, and we kinda talked about that in the last video, but yeah, he's my ex boss and he kinda knew that I had these this video skills. So um when he wanted to start YouTube, it kinda made sense that we work together. And then potent and then I'm potentially working with two PTs. One of them used to be my ex boss's PTs and I actually did a video for the one one of the one of the PTs like ages back, and then the other PT Kaya, um, I actually met through. Well, technically he reached out, but he is friends or business partners with uh, one of my friends. And then Danielle and Alessandra, I met through uh, an event um, that Anthony invited me to. So shout out Anthony, shout out Danielle, shout out Alessandra. The Dream Skin Clinic, primary school friend again. They were yeah when I first started making videos or like YouTube videos like ages back. Um, Back when I was in roofing, uh, she hit me up and she's like, yo, do you want to make a video for us? Yeah, that's how um, me and the Dream Skin Clinic started working together. And that's I think that's pretty much all my clients. I'll do like random videos for like random different places here and there. But these are my like kind of like monthly clients. So yeah, shout out to all my friends and clients and everyone. Um, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for working with me. It means a lot. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much for watching. Um, sorry for this video being a bit longer, but hopefully you got some value out of it. Right, I'll see you guys tomorrow.